Hello YouTube, Facebook. Today I want to talk to you about very important understanding that people are not seeing, you know. You know, of course, uh, Paul says, you know, in Ephesians 6 and 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. It's so important to understand that scripture because the thing is, I'm going to talk to you about the war of, well, worshiping war. It's a worshiping war. That's one thing, the reality of the worshiping war that you don't know is being taking place. You know what I'm saying? Right now, you know, as we speak, there's a worshiping war going on that determines either the children of light or the children of darkness can have the advantage concerning the territories of the high places. Now, the thing is, first of all, we need to understand the more we sin, the more we produce this thing called spiritual pollution. And it operates just as the natural spiritual pollution. You know, it sits in the air but more likely this spiritual pollution you know if it, it comes into this cloud that has been established and developed you know through years and years and generations and generations that it's sitting in the heavens now I know if you look in the heavens and if you see a bunch of like thick clouds imagine seeing a bunch of thick white clouds but Imagine those clouds becoming dark, you know, and they sitting in the heavens. Well, that's the idea of spiritual. Uh, it's a dark spiritual cloud that is sitting under the earth that we don't know is there because it's a spiritual cloud, you know. And the thing is, if you don't know that it's there, you don't know what you are doing concerning the effects of continually operating in sin and iniquity. And the thing is, we don't know what our sin is doing. Our, you know, I know, you know, we know we're not supposed to sin, but, you know, there's a purpose of why you're not supposed to sin that we're not trying to find out to what extent. And the thing is, the extent is that we're producing spiritual pollution when we sin. Now, the Bible talks about, you know, the polluting, you know, that, that we're polluting, you know, uh, uh, the commandments of God. We're polluting the word, the word of God. You know, more likely contaminating something that was once pure, and that's what we don't realize that we're doing to our body. Rec understanding that we're created by God, the image and the likeness of God, that God can dwell in us. That we're, you know, putting a substance inside of us that are not supposed to be in us. That's causing darkness to develop, you know, inside of us that is going in the air. Now, I'm going to show you, you know, you know, the idea, I wrote a idea diagram of the spiritual pollution, you know. And see, imagine this is the earth, you know, heaven, heaven. These are clouds. I know I'm not a perfect, you know, uh, artist. But this is a form. See, what you don't understand, this is the spiritual cloud. It's real dark. It's looking at the white clouds in the air, but this is like dark. I mean, pure dark like rain, like it's in the rain. See this darkness? See, this is what, this darkness cloud is what the principalities, my ugly principalities and powers picture, are go. what they do, they get you to go against your brother and sister and disobey God and you know all kind of wickedness so you can get this spiritual this is my spiritual pollution up to this cloud that it goes here and it gets thicker and what the principalities do they go up to this cloud and they feed off this cloud to give them more strength to come down and do more deceiving and get us in conflict and confusion and conflict and chaos 
with each other, you know, doing contrary to what we're supposed to be doing concerning the image and the likeness of God. And that's what this cycle been going on ever since, you know, Adam and Eve, you know, this thing has been going on and the pollution is real thick. It's real thick. It's accumulation ever since the beginning, you know, that these principalities are getting more stronger as much as we produce more spiritual pollution up in the air by worshiping mainly Baal. You know, this guy Baal, you know. And I'm finna show you an idea concerning um, Elijah, you know, concerning the prophet that, you know, helped, of course, restore, you know, reign to the Israels, Israel, to the children of Israel. But, you know, the thing is, you know, Elijah, you know, the one, you know, prophet, you know, that God has chosen to restore everything back in order. Of course, you know about the the confrontation with the Baal prophets. There were 450 prophets against one prophet. Could you imagine that? And one prophet just annihilated all of them. You know the story. But this is what, you know, Elijah is, you know, said, you know, concerning the situation that was going on in Israel that is continually going right now. It's uh, 1 Kings 18 and 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And not, and not a word. Oh, sorry. But, uh, and, and it says, not a word that the people, you know, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. And, and the people answered him, not a word. You know, and the thing is, the people didn't answer him, not a word, because they knew that it was worshiping God, worshiping God, and worshiping Baal at the same time. And the problem is that we're not realizing that this is going on, and and why does this worship has to of, of, of a darkness has to stop and why we have to worship a current to the light is more important because a procedure, a cycle is taking place. A cycle, just like rain. Rain falls down on the earth and, and, and it evaporates back in the air. The same cycle of rain is the same cycle of spiritual darkness and spiritual light. You know what I'm saying? That like the, the scripture says, the blessings go up I mean, the praises go up and the blessings come down. As much as we praise God, you know, with, with not, within our hearts, that's what's important I'm going to really, you know, talk about. As we praise God with our hearts, the more we counteract this, this, this um, cloud here of darkness, you know, that is in the air, what it does, it dissolves the cloud of darkness more and more, but the problem is it's getting filled up with more people that are sinning, you know, and, you know, bringing pollution is filling up as much more is it dissolving because, you know, that's why God is seeking after worshipers that worship him in spirit and truth because what you do is you counteract, you dissolve this, you know, you know, spiritual dark cloud that is sitting in, the, you know, high places. That's why, you know, the Bible, Ephesians talks about, you know, the principalities, you know, in the heavenly places that, you know, we're supposed to counteract to come up against and fight against. Now, here's the thing I need to talk about worship. Worship is more like an altar. Of course, you know the story of Gideon, uh, hopefully, that, you know, Gideon was, you know, fighting against the Midianites. You know, Gideon got, you know, the God was telling Gideon to destroy first destroy their altars you know what i'm saying the altars because the reason why the altars and if you read of course the kings you know first kings and the kings you know you hear about you know the the god will tell the king if that wants to worship god and wants to restore israel to destroy the altars destroy the altars the groves and everything else because he wanted to destroy it because it's put 
is feeding spiritual pollution to the principalities and the powers of the earth. And we're not understanding to what magnitude that we're feeding the kingdom of darkness. Now, remember that, you know, Satan was a, you know, serpent at the uh, beginning, you know. He started off as a serpent, but all of a sudden, in spiritually, he becomes a dragon in Revelation 12. Reason why? Because he's eating this, you know, he's feeding off of this spiritual cloud that you, of darkness, cloud that you don't see, you know, in the places that he's trying to get you to worship darkness to make sure that, you know, that, you know, he feeds. And the more he eats, the more strength in the kingdom gets that they can go cause havoc across the confusion and conflict and chaos in this world that we're not realizing. Now, an idea example is Daniel. You know, Daniel was praying, you know, for, you know, it says in Daniel 11, you know, and 12, it says, Then said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for, for from the first day that thou settest thine heart, that's why I want to go, thy heart, to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God in thy words. Hear were here were heard your your words were heard i am come for thy word but the prince of the kingdoms of persia would stood me one in 21 days lo michael one of the chief prince came to help me and i remained there with the kings of persia see in that situation right there you know, in that verses showed you the magnitude of the reality of spiritual darkness. You know what I'm saying? The kingdom war that is going on. It's talking to you about the principalities and powers in the light and darkness are fighting. It says that Michael's fighting for 21 days against the prince of, of the kingdoms of Persia. Could you imagine, you know, fight, you know, that he has to fight it to 21 days to beat these guys? And the problem is, it took them so long because the people are feeding these guys, you know, these principalities worship to give them strength to beat up the light that's trying to help us and restore the world and get the world back in order. You know, that we're not understanding that is going on. And I want to talk to you about your heart. Now, Jesus says, love the Lord thy God with all your, the first thing he said, heart. You know, and that's important. You understand heart. The reason why the heart, because the heart is the altar. A heart is the altar that produces true praise and tr or false worship. Now, guess what? We can praise God and dance, you know, and get crunk and move around and dance like crazy. And still, you know, we and still don't give God a pr true worship. It's not in our energy and how we praise God, but it's in our obedience and how much we clean our hearts, you know, that's why David says, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit inside of me, that I will produce true praise unto God. It's not all about how much we, you know, but our energy help us to continue to worship God in spirit and truth. You know, like when people praise God in energy, but it's that helps. But it's not the thing, very thing that we need to focus on understand if we want to counteract the praise. Now, worship is potent. You know what I'm saying? Like it, like, you know, potent chemicals, like, you know, uh, dish detergent. You know, there's a potent chemical you pour a little bit in and it creates, you know, a, a cleaning force. Worship is impotent. And as much as we, you know, have a true heart unto God, it's how potent our words get up to heaven. And, 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 and what you need to realize that the scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. And obedience is the number one powerful, potent, you know, worship we can give unto God that can go through the, um, the, the cloud of darkness, that can get, you know, the word of God to God, that, we, that they, Daniel is trying to show us right here. And we need to understand that our obedience is very important. And it's important to create a clean heart and renew a right spirit inside of you because that pollution is in the air when you walk out the door. So I hope you understand that this, you know, 
this and understand it. To God be the glory, to Him forever, in Jesus' name, amen.